Dear friends in Christ, the whole world, especially our country, is passing through a very perilous situation. The pandemic, COVID-19, frightens us all terribly. It's a very painful situation of suffering. Innumerable persons have lost their lives. Even more numbers are gasping for breath. We cannot say that we are experiencing the Paschal joy, the joy of the Easter time. Yet we cannot give up hope. Our hope is in God. We try to follow the directives of the governments of wearing masks, keeping social distance, constantly sanitizing our hands and so forth. These are measures to protect ourselves personally and our fellow men and women, our brothers and sisters. At the same time, it's a time when we should turn to God in earnest prayer and meditation. We need to go ahead and do our duties in union with God. We are sure that God will not give us up. God will hearken to the prayers of his people. The gospel passage today presents the need of being united to God, united to Jesus. That is, we hear the allegory of the vine and branches from the gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. The other two readings of this fifth Sunday of Easter time are first reading from the acts of the apostles chapter 9 verses 26 to 31 and the second reading from the first letter of john chapter 3 verses 18 to 24 the allegory of the fourth gospel is part of the mystical literature we can say it's mysticism that is the union of the human soul with the divine that this allegory teaches us to be united with christ our souls ourselves our body and soul should be united to God in such a way that we will be enabled to produce abundant fruits the metaphor of vine is a familiar one to many cultures in the old testament the people of israel is the choice vine vine is a symbol of the people but here jesus says that he is the true vine what is meant is that what had been promised to the people of israel is fulfilled in the person of jesus that is god dwells in the midst of the people the people keep his commands and thus they produce abundant fruit this gets realized in the person of jesus the image of wine was also pleasing even to the greeks according to their mythology dionysus one of their several gods was the god of wine and ecstasy wine was considered as the blood of dionysus falling into ecstasy was getting into union with this god this secular type of understanding had something material and physical about it and that's not what is intended by john in the allegory that he presents in chapter 15 here st john speaks of the mystical union with jesus for that one has to go beyond one's self and get united with jesus creatively positively and thus bear fruit it's getting into the milieu of the divine origin one of the fathers of the church an ecclesiastical writer of the first centuries explains this origin lived in the last decades of the second century and the first decades of the third century he says that the word of jesus is the vine of which jesus speaks it penetrates our minds and hearts and it becomes the source of inspiration for us to do good works not just the inspiration to do good works now and then but it lets us totally be grounded by the word of god so that it becomes a habit leading to at times at least to ecstatic experience jesus declares that he is the true vine indeed jesus is true in every respect in different respects when i engage in my daily way of life in union with jesus i encounter there the true man for jesus is the true man in jesus we find the fullness of humanity even as we find the fullness of divinity in him he is the true man he is the fulfillment of all our dreams human dreams our aspirations our desires our yearnings our challenges especially of the human spirit only he can satisfy the human hunger quench the human thirst therefore if we try to live our lives attached to christ we will encounter the true humanity in the person of christ this allegory speaks of three things we can say one of living united to the trunk of the vine we have spoken of this just above second of being cut off from the vine and third 
of producing fruits that of being cut off that's the second aspect in this regard the third verse here is significant he says you are already pruned because of the word that i spoke to you the apostles the hearers of jesus are given a guarantee that they are already pruned because they have been open to his words but there is a sad story here in the context of the farewell discourse one of judas the story of judas who had not opened himself to the words of jesus so that was a sad story hence it's important to continuously verify whether one is open to the word of jesus therefore as a christian one has to constantly make an examination of conscience to see if he or she is taking the right path opening himself or herself to the word of jesus now with regard to producing fruits verse 5 is peculiar jesus says without me you can do nothing perhaps some would think that this is an exaggerated statement without jesus we can do something but he says without me you can do nothing this sentence has been the object of much deliberation in the theology of grace pelagius a priest theologian of the 4th century argued that one could do good works which would merit him or her of eternal life or kingdom of god without the assistance of god that is by pure human effort eternal life could be gained St Augustine taking the lead from this verse argued against Pelagius insisting on the need of grace to do good works which would ensure one of eternal life In the 16th century the council of Trent saw this phrase more positively it spoke of the merit that will be brought in when the good deeds are done in union with Christ that means we should depend on God to do good works This phrase you can do nothing without me means that it is on the basis of the love of Christ that our deeds become fruitful love that Christ showed towards us is the foundation and model with which our good deeds become fruitful it's the foundation for our good deeds because it was in Christ's paschal mystery that we were able to do good works without Christ's love that has been given to us through the paschal mystery our actions will be fruitless Christ's love is the basis of all this Christ becomes our moral or example as well that's why Jesus went ahead with the interpretation of this allegory thus he said love one another as i have loved you this is chapter 15 verse 12 Jesus is the source basis foundation and finally the model for our loving our good actions out of love dear friends in christ at this very difficult time through which we are going we need to be united with christ only trusting in christ we will find meaning for our life and death only by abiding in him we will be producing fruits that will remain for eternal life amen